Namaste everyone how are you i am hope everything is fine my name is shubham alok and i am in this particular video today going to teach you a principle related to the analysis of transit planetary transits are very important to be very honest with you because everything is in jyotish is transit your horoscope is the transit logged for the moment you are born a prashna is a transit for the moment when the question is asked and a muhurta is a transit for the moment when you are going to do something right so transit which is an integral part of vedic jyotish forms the base of astrology transit helps you in timing events not only timing events according to me transit helps you in understanding the nature of the time as we know there are karmas vedic astrology believes that we have go through multiple lives and in the multiple lives that we have gone before we have done multitudes of karma and that karma few of which we are destined to go into this particular life that is reflected through our horoscope now the manifestation of this karma happens with dashantra dasha but the intensity of happening because dasha is a long period of time the intensity of happening is decided by transit not only that as a doctor studies medicine to cure you in the same manner an astrologer studies the signs of stars the signs of fortune to make you more fortunate to become fortunate it is essential to take right decision at right point of time and when what is the correct thing to be done is decided by transits so hence it is very important to look at transits not only to be able to time events but also for the reason of knowing what is good to be done at what point of time because transit is a muhurta in action transit is the best time good time bad time in action in work and in transit today i am going to talk of a very important topic this is a signature of north india from where i belong but sadly today people have forgot it and because i am talking about it i will also talk about a uh, many two three secrets related to it also with an aim to deepen your understanding and make your prediction related to transits even better our topic for today is murti nirnay murti means idol nirnay means the decision of idol you know or deciding what type of image it is now the point is you know there are many indigenous technique developed all over india because indians have been practicing astrology since long many civilizations in the world have been practicing astrology many of which still practice it and many of which have lost this particular practice right and people have developed their own techniques to make the predictions easy or to add new dimensions to the predictions add new depth to the predictions right this is what people have done in that manner you know when navratra starts the nine days of devi starts depending on when the navratra is starting it is told that devi is riding a particular type of vehicle and the result from this that particular navratra up to the next navratra whatever changes that are going to happen in the season in the nature all the mundane predictions are done based on that in the same manner for the matter of transit also this murti nirnay is done and based on this the result of the transit is taken into consideration now the basic point being this particular principle that i am talking about is a very indigenous principle developed by locals it is i think not mentioned in classics prime classics at least but its results are far superior so what it is telling you it is telling you to check the position of moon when a particular transit is happening check the position of moon and that decides the type of idol 
the planet is writing. So it is simple. It is to be checked, checked from the natal moon. So you say the natal moon is in Aries. The moon of the horoscope in horoscope moon is situated in Aries Rashi. Now you are going to judge the transit of a planet. Say we are talking of the forthcoming transit of Saturn. So Saturn on 24th of January 2023, this Saturn will enter Aquarius. I am using my calculations. 2 a.m. 10 minutes in the midnight of 24th January is when this transit is going to happen. And when this transit is happening, moon will also be in Aquarius. So now the position of the moon at the time when any transit is happening is to be noted. Now, if this moon is in the first house, sixth house or 11th house from your natal moon, from that Rashi where moon is situated in the birth chart, it is a Swarna Murti, gold Murti. That indicates that this transit is favorable. The gold metal is loved by all the gods. Basically meaning this transit gives you favor of the gods hence this transit is auspicious this transit is good if the moon is situated in second fifth or ninth house from the natal moon it is rajat murthy it is a silver idol of the deity and silver is secondary to gold when you don't have gold to appease gods you use silver as a substitute metal to appease gods. So basically meaning if this is a silver idol in that particular scenario, the transit is also favorable, though not as favorable as the first one. Not as favorable as the gold transit, but still it is favorable, it is good. If the moon at the time of a particular transit happening is in 3rd, 7th or 10th house from the natal moon. In that particular scenario, this is a copper idol. This copper idol indicates like this goes towards the bad results. You say gold idol is 100% good result. Silver idol is 75% good result. This copper idol is 50% good result only. This transit is a mixed bag. You are going to have good results also. And you are going to have bad results also in this particular transit. One needs to be careful. Now, if at the time when the transit is starting, Moon is somehow situated in 4th, 8th or 12th house from the natal position. This is an iron murti. This is a lauhu murti which makes the transit only 25% favorable. So it is more in the negative side and less on the positive side. Once again, because some people may miss the point. So I am repeating the basic point being you have to check the position of moon. When a particular transit is happening and based on that, it is decided. Now you say this example that we are taking on 24th January 2023, Saturn is going into Aquarius. Moon is also in Aquarius. So if you have Aquarius ascendant or if you are having If you are having Aquarius Ascendant or you say you are having uh, Virgo Ascendant or if you are having Aries Ascendant, then in this particular scenario, this is a gold transit of Saturn that is going to happen. Sorry, not Ascendant, Moon sign. I'm extremely sorry. As I told you, this is to be decided from moon sign. So if you are having moon in Aquarius, moon in Virgo, 
or moon into Aries. In that particular scenario, this is this transit is good for you. 100% good result of this particular transit is going to happen. Now, if you are having your moon into Capricorn, if you are having your moon into Gemini, or if you are having your moon into Libra, then in that particular scenario, this transit of Saturn into Aquarius Rashi is a silver transit for you. Hence, it will be 75% beneficial. If you are having your moon in Sagittarius Rashi, if you are having your moon in Leo Rashi, or if you are having your moon in Taurus Rashi, in that particular scenario, this will be a copper transit. 50% good result and 50% bad result will come. And lastly, if you are having your moon into Scorpio, if you are having your moon into Cancer, or if you are having your moon into Pisces, in that particular scenario, it is an iron transit and it is only 25% beneficial. Now, there is one more point. In this particular transit, I am saying this from my experience. Now, in this particular transit, what will happen? Saturn will start retrograding and he will come back to Capricorn. So, then again to judge the result of Saturn going into Capricorn, in retrograde motion, remaining in Capricorn and coming out of Capricorn in direct motion, once again, you can use this principle to decide it. And when Saturn comes to Aquarius again, after finishing his retrogression in Capricorn in future, you can use the principle third time to decide the result. This is Murthy Nirnay. This should be done. And while doing this, while doing this, one point of caution that I will put in front of you is that take the natural signification of planets. The problem is we see the transits, we try to predict things related to transit, but we hardly know which house is good for planetary transit and which house is bad for planetary transit. So I will tell it in a nutshell. Sun is good in 3rd, 6th, 10th and 11th house in transit. This position is taken from moon but can be used from ascendant and other reference points also from wherever you see that. Mars, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu give good result while transiting 3rd, 6th and 11th house. Moon gives good result when transiting through 3rd, 6th, 10th, 11th, 1st and 7th house. Mercury gives good transit. Mercury gives good result when transiting second, fourth, eighth, third, sixth, tenth, eleventh house. Jupiter gives good results while transiting through second house, fifth house, ninth house, third house, sixth house, and eleventh house from the natal moon. And Venus gives good results in all the houses except for the sixth house and tenth house from the natal moon and from the or from the ascendant or from whatever point you are judging the transit. Now the good result of the planet is dependent on the signification and the house and the other planets are situated in the house, combinations in that house that is happening. So basically speaking, Saturn is, Saturn indicates misfortunes, delay, etc. But along with that, because Saturn indicates servants positively, it indicates you gaining servant, being in an influential position, people ready to help you also. So when Saturn is going through a good transit, third house, sixth house, eleventh house, servants help you, you become influential in society, you have people to serve. Now in this particular matter, what Murthy Nirnay is telling you, that except for the third, sixth and eleventh house, in other houses, Saturn should be bad, it should produce grief, related to that house. So you say Saturn is going into fourth house. It should create grief, misery related to fourth house. 
related to mother property vehicle etc but now because if this murthy is good if it is a gold murthy or if it is a silver murthy then saturn's transit into fourth house will not be producing grief it will be okay whereas if this is a bad transit you say this is a copper idol or this is an iron idol then this transit of saturn into the fourth house will be bad it will produce more miseries if there are planets in the fourth house take into consideration the nature of planet in the fourth house and also take into consideration where the fourth lord is going this is my personal secret of interpreting the transits and this is one such principle that you should not forget because what happens in astrology saying this is good this is bad is very simple but actually deciding it i am not talking of you know making a youtube video and saying anything is good or bad no i am talking looking at it into horoscopes deciding whether it is good or bad making a prediction and that prediction correct prediction is quite difficult so what i am saying right now is completely based on experience you use it and you will know the result many every day i get calls of many people messages of many people sending me telling me that how by using my techniques how by learning my principles their astrological capacity their astrological understandings have improved and how they are able to make good predictions right so follow the principle and uplift your level of predictions now there is one more point there is one more particular that i want particular point that i want to talk about this is secret from my side of course it is not written in any book but still it is i am telling it from my side i have also talked about it before that is the locking of transit so what happens a planet is entering a rashi you say saturn right now is entering aquarius now the result of saturn in aquarius will remain there for two and a half years and after that saturn will change the rashi this is very true but many a times what happens is the result does not fade even after the transit is over many a times what you see person is not going through a very good dasha at all but because of a good transit one becomes famous one becomes rich or whatever you say and even after the transit is over one remains rich one remains successful right why this happen this happens with locking of transit how does this happen when the planet is going into a rashi when the planet is going into a rashi at that point of time if moon is already present in the rashi then this transit will be a locked transit and until and unless planet comes to that rashi again completing his movement throughout all the 12 signs of the zodiac for that time the result the effect of the transit will remain stable though the transit will be over but results will remain constant dashas antar dashas etc will not be able to change it this is something that many people don't know but the ignorance of this particular principle is very dangerous because in that scenario you will not be able to assess the results in reality say for someone a bad transit is locked right now as i have shown you the horoscope before on 24th of january 2023 when saturn is entering aquarius moon is already there so this is going to be a locked transit and until and unless saturn comes to aquarius 30 years after 2023 that will happen in 2053 so from 2023 to 2053 for this 30 years the result of saturn will be locked so whatever the result of saturn transit you are going to have in this two and a half year of aquarius transit the same result with high intensity and with low intensity you are going to have for 
next 30 years and for this particular reason this transit of saturn is very crucial right so a proper analysis of this transit should be made and astrologers should keep this particular thing in mind otherwise their analysis of the horoscope may go wrong many a times because i am known for my predictive accuracy people being saddened from other astrologers they come to me and they sir they say sir everyone predicted this for me that for me nothing good happened only bad things are happening the shy is also changing remedy is not working i don't know why this is happening no one is able to answer can you answer me why and in many such cases it is the lock of transit that have happened before which is creating this issue so what we have to do you have to see the next lock when it is coming for a particular example you say this saturn's transit into aquarius is locked for next 30 years now in between you say after and this saturn's lock of transit for 30 years is inauspicious back but seven years after this there happens a lock of transit of jupiter also so what will and this jupiter transit lock is auspicious for the native so now what will happen for the coming 12 years since Till Jupiter completes his round throughout the zodiac, the good result of the Jupiter transits will be locked and the bad result of the Saturn transit will be surpassed, keeping in mind that latest changes remain effective over the previous changes, right? So this have to be kept in mind while judging a horoscope, while analyzing a horoscope, while timing events, otherwise you will be doing a great mistake. And you will also be in category of those astrologers whose consultation don't benefit their clients. That I don't want you to be. To be right. <coughs> Sorry. This is something that you have to keep in mind. Now the thing is Saturn is going into Aquarius in 2023 January and this will be a logged transit for everyone in the world. Because Moon is already present. But this transit is good or this transit is bad that depends on your horoscope, placement of planets in your horoscope and all these things. Right? So the transit lock is good or bad to decide that one have to keep into mind the horoscopic conditions and should analyze it with help of other tools of horoscopic judgment, other tools of transit judgment. And lastly, the main prime topic that I was talking about is Murthy Nirna. And if you look at this particular principle, it is talking about the position of moon at the start of the transit, any transit. It is not only the transit of moon. for the transit of Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, any planet. Whenever exactly the planet is making the change, at that point of time, you are judging the position of moon. Now, this is highlighting the importance of moon. That's the basic point. This is, you know, very essential. The position of moon at the start of the Shah, the position of moon at the start of transit, the position of moon while starting a remedy, the position of moon while doing anything is very, very, very important. Moon is so greatly important that sages have made a specific horoscope just from the moon known as Chandra Kundali moon horoscope. And it is used extensively through North India. The problem why the level of prediction is failing is because we are ignoring such crucial things. I have talked about moon and moon horoscope in detail in one of my courses named Mastering the Graha. And people interested in knowing more about planets and the type of results they should give should opt for now coming to my topic the point being is to actually really judge the result of the transit you should check the position of the moon at the start of the transit and then you have to decide i will give you one example which i think will make 
clear. There was a native of Aquarius ascendant. Previously in 2020 January when Saturn 26th January 2020 if I am not wrong around 26th January 2020 Saturn was entering into Capricorn. In the Bhinnashtaka Varga of Saturn Capricorn is having just one point and every astrologer predicted this native that this Saturn transit will be very bad will be very pathetic will be very troublesome for you. No one will be able to save you. You will be bankrupt, etc., etc. Multiple bad things. Many astrologers all over India told, I don't want to take this. This client came to me. He was very much worried. I told him not to get worried at all. He was very suspicious of accepting my prediction. But now the transit is coming to an end and his condition he himself knows is very thankful to me and he keeps on asking me how I predicted this. But the point is how I predicted this, let me tell you. So let's look at it. When the transit of Saturn happened into Aquarius, sorry, when the transit of Saturn happened into Capricorn, I am talking of 30th January 2020. If you look at the horoscope for this moment, 30th January 2020, 14.15 in the afternoon, that is 2.15 in the afternoon, you will see that moon is situated in Pisces. Now in the horoscope of this native, because this is an Aquarius Lagana, in the horoscope of this native, Pisces is the second house where this person is having a Virgottam plan. And the Lord of the second house is creating a Dhani Yoga money combination also. So what I said, because it is transiting over a Vargottam planet, that is a good planet. And because the Lord of this house is also contributing into a Yoga, Dhani Yoga, money combination. Rest assured, this two and a half year, you will make a lot of money. You will receive a financial status that you haven't seen before. And... There will be all good only. There is nothing to worry. And now time is the answer as it have happened in reality. So what I am telling you is if you want to judge the result of the transit, when the exact change is happening, check the position of me. Check which Rashi moon goes into, which house it is from the ascendant, which planets are situated in the house and what combination that house lord is making. Is it a good combination? Is it a weak combination? What result this combination is supposed to give? And that result is felt throughout that transit without any doubt. This is an experience-based principle. This is my biggest tool to predict a transit. And I can be, I can confidently tell you that except me, no one have taught this technique before. See, I don't know what people have taught, right? I get very little time to see what people do, what people don't do, what people teach, what people don't teach. But this is my original research. I have taught it all from scratch. I have read no book where it is written. This is all my original thought. And I am confident that because it is my original thought, how it can be that someone else may have written it or taught it ever, right? This is why I say original technique. No, because I have made it all by myself. This is not hinted in any book, any classic whatsoever. Right? So this is my biggest tool. This is my biggest technique. This is my biggest hathiyar, you can say, to predict the transit and whatever result is found using this method, only that result comes to pass. And this technique, why I was compelled to think over it. Why I was compelled to think on these lines. Because a planet keeps on going into a Rashi multiple times. Saturn will go into a Rashi three times in your life. Other planets will go multiple times in life. Jupiter will at least go through one Rashi six or seven times in your life. Every time he will give the same result. Of course not. Every time he will give different result. 
so if you don't use this principle every time jupiter goes through the seventh house if you keep on predicting marriage then everyone should get married seven times in their life that does not happen in reality you also know right this is nonsensical to say so this is how i differentiate the result and i have found it working like bullet magic and i am sharing this technique with you for the welfare of the astrological world so that the true light of sages can come and you can taste the real and the original research what a research is called because there are many people who portray puny things little things as research which comes through common sense that i don't believe in right so this is a research you know what i got whatever leaving this point aside right so i think the principle is extremely clear all the three principles are very clear i think and there is nothing that is left to be taught i just want to give you an information that if you are interested in astrology if you want to learn it and because this transit of saturn is going to be very crucial because it is a locked transit no i am doing a special type of course what i am calling a marathon course where i am doing six classes in the course back to back one class on monday one on tuesday one on wednesday one on thursday one on friday one on saturday i think the course starts from sunday so one on sunday one on monday one on tuesday one on wednesday one on thursday one on friday i am doing six classes back to back where i am teaching how to decode the result that planet is going to give in a transit how to time events using transit and this course where there will be six classes and every classes that i teach is almost 2 to 2 and a half hours so it will be around 12 to 18 hours total teaching in this course i am going to teach how to predict the result for transit if there is a bad transit how to remedy it all in depth and i am going to teach more than 18 techniques and more then tens of my original researches which i myself have thought not written in any book written nowhere all my thinking my understanding thoroughly tested with horoscopes over the years so if you want to learn transits in depth see transit through multiple angles if you want to be able to time events with precision and ease if you want to master transit based predictions this course that i am going to do from the last week of november from the last sunday of november the 27th from 27th of november to 2nd of december one class every day teaching you the nuances of transit and how to predict using it you should join the course to know more about the details regarding the course check the description section of the video in all the video in description section i send links i leave links i put links of those courses which are relevant to what i have taught into this video i hope these three principles help you understand transits better and make predictions using transits thank you for watching the video i will meet you in forthcoming week